Now I showed you how to add files or add in you know stuff to a file using the echo command. I'll scroll back up here to where we did that, right? So for example, I can echo Brian Green into new file and then I can use the cat command and I can show the contents. You can see there's some stuff in there. Um, in the real world, you normally wouldn't edit files this way. Uh, you need some kind of a text editor to has a more elegant way to edit the file because um, then you can kind of scroll through the different lines in the file and make sort of granular changes to it. Um, there are a lot of different text editors out there. Emacs, for example, is a common one. There's, there's a whole list of them. But the one that I always use in my courses and the one that I always talk to students about is VI. VI is um, kind of difficult to use sometimes because it's a command line program, right? But I'll show you what it looks like here. So if I type VI and then the name of the file that I want to edit with the text editor, or the name of a new file, doesn't have to be uh, you know, any file that I want to create, so VI will create a file just like touch. You know, if instead of typing touch file name, you could do VI file name. And then you'll be editing that file. And when you save it, you'll have a new file with whatever contents you put in. In this case, I'm going to edit an existing file. When you open that up, it brings up this, this little text editor. And you can scroll around in here and you can move your cursor. You can see I'm moving my cursor. Now, the thing is, let's say I wanted to move my cursor down here and add my middle initial right here, right between Brian and Green. I want to add a C in there for my middle initial. If I just type C, it doesn't do anything. It's not typing anything. The reason is because I am in command mode right now, not in edit mode. So in order to go into edit mode, you either have to type I for insert or A for append. So if you type A for append, when you start typing, it types in front of the cursor. If you insert, it starts typing after. So I'm going to use I for insert and you'll see, oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong screen here. So I'm going to type I for insert. I'm going to type the C, and you can see it puts the C right in front of that G. I'm going to hit Escape, and this puts me back into the command mode again. And this time I'm going to hit A for append, and I'm going to type a C. Right? So they kind of do similar things, right? Um, but you can either use insert mode or you can hit A for append. Um, append usually will take you to the end of the sentence. So uh, for example, I'm going to hit escape again. I'm going to put my cursor all the way at the end of this line. And you'll notice that I can't go all the way into the line. I'm at the uh, right in front of that N. And if I type insert, I can start typing stuff in front of that N. But if I hit A, by the way, I hit escape to get back to, to uh, command mode. If I hit A for append, oh, let me do that again. If I hit A for append, notice that the cursor moves to the end of the line because I'm going to append to the end of the line. Now, let's say you are done editing this file, right? You've used your cursor to kind of go to different lines. You've used the I or the A button to get in and make some changes. You hit escape to get back to that command mode, right? So if I hit escape, notice too, if I hit I for insert, it says insert at the bottom. So I know that I'm in the mode where I can edit this file. When I hit escape, I have nothing at the bottom. I know I'm in command mode again. Um, so now if I hit the colon, so now you see a colon at the bottom in command mode. I can now type some commands to do something. In this case, I'm going to use the Q to quit. And if I type an exclamation point, it's going to quit without asking me if I really want to quit. Sometimes you don't want to just quit. You also want to write those changes. So the W is going to write changes. So most commonly in this class and in most of my classes, uh, when you hit, when you're using VI, all you really need to do is scroll around in the file, use A or I to get into the mode where you can insert something. You can use the backspace if you need to delete if you really want to. Um, but there are other commands, right? So for example, if I want to get rid of this C, I can hit X and it deletes, right? So you don't have to go into insert mode. So you can learn those commands and I want to show you how you would do that. But for the most part, you would only need to do something like uh, WQ bang, which means write the file, quit, and don't ask me if I really want to quit. And now it's written out that file. If I use the cat command and show new file, right? There's that period on the end that I added. So the other op thing I want you to see is if you want to learn more about VI, if you really want to learn all the little, the little tips and tricks that'll speed things up for you in VI, run the command VIM tutor and it will open up a tutor for you. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to copy this VIM tutor in place. So 
if you work through this, it kind of talks you through, it kind of works through all the different commands that'll make you more familiar with VI and you can work with it much faster. So I always recommend do this VIM tutor. It's not going to take that long. You can take 15 minutes to go through the VIM tutor. Uh, you may not remember all the commands, but you're going to remember what's possible uh, with VI. And you'll know that there's, you know what, this is kind of hard what I'm doing here, but I remember there was an easier way to do this, and you can go and Google it. You'd be surprised at some of the powerful features that are in VI. There are a lot of people that use VI to do almost everything, uh, even though it's much more difficult to use than Emacs. But there's another advantage to VI, which is the fact that it's on almost every distribution of Linux, no matter how small or lightweight. Even when I have little tiny containers that I run, a lot of times VI is on there, right? Or VIM, one or the other. And, and all these different commands will work. So definitely worth learning VI. It's always going to be there. You know, Emacs is not something that's on every distro. For example, uh, even though it's a little bit easier to use Emacs, if I type the Emacs command on here, it's not there. I'd have to install that package first, and sometimes you'll find you can't install it. It doesn't have enough space. It's too small of a machine. Maybe it's a Raspberry Pi that doesn't have a very big drive or whatever it is, or a thermostat, right, that you're trying to manage. Um, you know, all these IoT devices we have in the corporate environments now. So definitely worthwhile to learn VI. I highly recommend that.